Welcome to Detroit Sports Jersey Media, Sundays from 11 a.m. to noon, broadcasting live from Detroit and stretching to the heart of Central Texas, here on FM 88.1 WHPR with co-hosts Longhorn and the Jersey Girl. Straight sports talk, no professionals here. And now, here's your host that never gets it right, but is never wrong, Will Sims. Welcome to Detroit Sports Jersey. It's me and the Longhorn holding it down January the 17th. What time is it, Longhorn? Game time, prime time, Detroit Sports Jersey media time. Let's get it on, Popcorn. All right, Longhorn, before we jump off into the um, NFL talk, now, do I have to force you, beg you, or just clown on you? Give me my props. Give me my props. What are you talking about, Willis? Yeah, you know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. You talked all that garbage last week. It was going to be hard to find me. Can't nobody find me. <laughs> yeah, baby. How's that Alabama and them road tires tasting in your mouth right now? Huh? You can find me easy to find. I'm the one holding the crystal ball, the trophy over my head next to Nick Saban. Yeah, it's easy to find me, Longhorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't go don't go from a scream to a whisper now. You was talking garbage last week. What are you talking about, man? I was for Alabama all in my heart all Nah, time, we don't man. need your type in on nah, nope, nope. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. I forbid you. No, we don't need your type on our side. We good. We good. Four national championships, baby. Count them. Nick Saban got four of them. Come on now. He got to go down as one of the greatest coaches in college football. Do you agree or disagree? Give him his props. Uh, I agree. I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that assessment of his skills. But I tell you what, that was a great game. That was a great game. It was a good back and forth game until the end. So Longhorn, you can't, add, you can't add no butt on the end of that. You can't do that. Uh, 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 so you try to tell me the whole game you knew that the Bama was gonna win. Yes, yes, yes. Now, you know your heart was pumping. Kool-Aid, I knew. And I, I'm not talking about the, the name brand Kool Aid. I'm talking about that, that Kool Aid that you get uh, 24 packs for a dollar. <laughs> Kool Aid when the score when it looked like uh, Bama was gonna lose. I'm not even trying, brother. You listen know, here, like, please you, come on. Y'all. Listen here, you can. I know, you know, you know, if they would have lost that game, you would have there you go. The what if? Today. What if? See, you can stand up there and tell all your Jerry Seinfeld jokes you want to, but the bottom oh. line, the bottom line is we are the champs. And don't go on no no what if. Ain't no what if. We the champs. We don't play that game down in Alabama. What if? I told you that from day one. You keep you keep throwing that what if. We don't play that there, homeboy. <laughs> We all about winning the championship. That's it. And you know what Nick Saban told the players before the game? If you oh, lose this, if you what did he tell them before the game? I know you were there. What did he, what did he tell them? If you lose this game, you're losers. Is that what he told That's them? That's exactly what he told them. <laughs> we don't accept. I'm, sure I'm sure you was right there next to him when he told him that. Right? Don't worry about that. And speaking of losers, let's go on and switch gears and get to your Detroit Lions, keeping your coach Jim Caldwell on board. By the way, if you want to join in on the conversation, three one three eight six eight three six eight eight. Later on in the show, the Jersey girl will be calling in, giving her opinion on the new general manager, the um, keeping Caldwell on board. It's his third year to his um, fourth. Fourth year of his contract. Longhorn, I'm going to let you start it off. What you think about Caldwell standing with your Detroit Lions? I'm glad he's staying, and I applaud Bob Quinn's decision for keeping the man. You know, Bob Quinn comes from a, from a, a great championship team. You know, I'm glad that they brought somebody from the outside, and I applaud the Ford, the Ford family for bringing somebody from the outside and not promote somebody from within the organization. Because if they would have put, uh, put somebody from within the organization, they probably would have got rid of my boy Caldwell. So I'm glad he stands. The players respect him. And, they, you know, and hey, give the brother uh, a couple more seasons. So I applaud, I applaud him for keeping him. I, I say, hey, two thumbs up. I'm glad he stands. 
Well, Long Horn, let me. So he's going to do good. I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to tell you the Jersey girl. See, y'all too close to the oh team. Oh, my God. You to, think he should go? No, no, no. Let me finish. Let me tell you what exactly let me, what's going on here. See, y'all too close to the team to see exactly what's going on, right? Bob, on, Bob Quinn kept Jim Caldwell on the team for the simple fact if the your Detroit Lions fail again, he has somebody to blame to keep his job. That's the bottom. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Now, I agree that Jim Caldwell should stay because I don't think that you can, should go from a winning season to where – Actually, you didn't do you, – you you started off rough in the beginning of the season. Everybody know you started with one and seven, two and whatever, but you ended up six and two at the end of the year. So you had a shaky first half, real shaky first half of your season. You, 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 you saved your job, I believe, by coming back, going six and two throughout the rest of the season. But I'm telling you right now, that's the only reason Bob Quinn – kept him because if they have the type of season next year that they had this year Caldwell will be fired and and Bob Quinn would not take the blame now some fans might say well he this is why you should have got rid of Jim Caldwell of course they're gonna throw that out there but he don't give a damn about that he can save his job and that's what I'm telling you is going on so you saying that he using he using my boy Jim as a scapegoat if so they have, so we can have a fall guy. If they have a losing season, come on, man! Hell yeah, that's exactly what's going on. I don't, I don't think they're gonna fire old, old Bob. You know, they have a losing season. No, 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 no! I didn't say fire Bob. I said that's that's an excuse he can use to keep his. They're not gonna fire him. That ain't, that ain't you. There ain't no way he's gonna be fired with it on his, with his first year under his belt. But at least see, Caldwell would be his scapegoat. The, you know, to keep the pressure off for the fans off of him, you know. Oh, so you can say, well, I gave, I gave him one more chance. And, it, hey, boom. He blew it. He blew it. So, hey, I did give him a chance. I gave the fans what they wanted. They wanted one more chance. We tried. So now, you know, so now we got to look out. So that's what you're trying to say. Well, basically, you know, around here at Longhorn, I know you don't be in the city a lot, but a lot of fans didn't, don't want Jim Caldwell back. The players do, but the fans don't. But, yes, that would be his scapegoat when the Jersey girl call in. I want to get her strong opinion on it. She's a de- true diehard Lions fan. I feel for you and her. But, anyway, that's another story. But, like I said, I'm glad that he's back because I don't think I don't think it would have been fair to give him only a two-season when you praised him in the first season when he went 11-5. and five. You got to the playoffs. You got Molly whopped in the playoffs, but you got there. Mollywop. You know, but you <laughs> but you got what there. Kind of term is Mollywop? <laughs> oh yeah, you know what Mollywop is. Y'all get it every Sunday down there at Ford Field or whether you're on the road. You know exactly what Mollywop means. <laughs> I gotta Google that, brother. <laughs> but uh but now that is you got your like the, uh, like the little Willie. <laughs> yeah. But uh you got your coach in place. Now the big question. Do you retain Calvin Johnson? Longhorn, what you think Bob Quinn going to do? Is he going to let him go? He's going to – I mean, is Calvin going to retire? We talked about this last week. Now that they got the new GM in place, they got the president in place, the coach in place. Now it's all about the players. What do you? What's your opinion on that? Feel free to join in on the conversation. 313-868-3688, Detroit Sports Jersey Media. I'm Will with the Longhorn in the house. Go ahead, Longhorn. Well, I say, I say, like you said, put, until they keep that twenty-four million on the table, uh, old Bob might do some serious talking to keep uh, keep Megatron there with the line. Megatron, thirty years old, nine season, he's ready for a Super Bowl ring. Uh, you know, he sees the light at the end of the tunnel. Lights in the tunnel, saying, "Just go ahead," and he, he's made his money. He made his more. He has made his mark on the NFL more than more than you know. He's beaten records, so it's now it's time to put that ring on. So it, it after like I said last show, after you after you made so much money, it's not all about the money. It's all about winning that championship Super Bowl ring. 
something that, you know, down the line you look back on, once you get it up in the 70s, 60, 60 years old, you can still look down at that hand and say, hey, I remember this, you know. Because when you win that Super Bowl ring, that makes you immortal in the world of football. So I, I think he's going to push that retirement mode on them. And now they're not going to keep that uh, $24 million in that salary cap. They, they're going to try to bring in some new players. So Let me tell you something. I'm Calvin Johns. We role playing right now, okay? You the gen- We're going to role play. You the general manager. You Bob Quinn. I'm Calvin Johnson. I'm sitting down right. at the ta- I'm sitting down at the table with you right now. I got twenty four million dollars on the table. You, I got twenty four million. No, no, no. You Bob Quinn. I'm uh, uh, I'm Calvin Johnson. I'm due to get paid twenty four million. All right. Convince me of why I should take a pay cut, and I'm going to co- tell you why I am not going to take one. <laughs> Go ahead, you Bob Quinn. I'm sitting down. I'm you, you. You opening up the negotiations. Go ahead, Bob. Talk to me. Little Megatron. First of all, hey. my name is Calvin. You ain't been here long enough to call me Megatron. <laughs> all right, Mister Johnson. There we go. Oh, there we go. We can start out with that, uh, Mister Johnson. <laughs> Look, we keep we keep in gym here for one more season. I think we got a great chance. To go to the uh, Super Bowl team, so just give us one more chance, one more season, and then we'll go from there and see what we can do with you. <laughs> Is that the best you got to offer me, Mister Quinn? <laughs> so he just gonna get up and walk out. Hey, dog, is that the best you have to offer me? Super Bowl? Hell, you got to make it to the playoffs to get to the Super Bowl, Bob. Coming from New England, you should know this. Hey, hey, and because I'm from New England, that's why I'm asking you to stay with us and hang tough with us because I know what it takes to get us there because I'm from New England. My pedigree of my record speaks for itself of where I'm coming from. So you can go out and shop around for another team if you want to, but you're going to look back and say, I should have stayed with Bob. Now, you can, take it. you can take this pay cut and play with us, or you can just take the pay cut and go on and play with somebody else. The choice is yours. Now, the ball is in your court, Mr. Megatron, Mr. Johnson, Mr. CJ, uh, CJ, whatever you want to call yourself. Now, the ball is in your court. What are you going to do? I'm going to shoot a dagger in your heart like uh, yeah. Steph Curry do everybody from the three-point line. Here we go, Mr. Bob Quinn, of why I'm not taking no pay cut. Only thing I want to hear come out of your mouth is two numbers, two, four. First of all, if I leave here, the quarterback that y'all paying all this money for, who, who who y'all paying all this money to, should I say, he will be exposed without me. That's number one. Now, that's the person you should be asking to pay, take a pay cut, not me. I made him. He didn't make me. Number two, Mr. Bob Quinn. If before I give you a hometown discount, I would go to there's four other teams out there that can use my talent. There's playoff teams, and I will give them to you, Mr. Bob Quinn. Our number one is the New England Patriots, who you just came from. I would give them the home down hometown discount first. Number two, I'm looking at Aaron Rodgers. Uh-oh, we're in the rival. We're in the same division, Bob. You don't want me to come back and tear you up down the field, Bob. You don't want that. We play two games a year, Bob. You don't want that. Number three, I can go up northwest, play in Seattle. Uh-oh, we got a young quarterback up there who can run and throw. Yeah, Bob, how's it looking now, Bob? All I want to hear is 2-4 come out of your mouth. Number four, if I choose to, I can have – Two more teams that I can look at after, after those three with the hometown discount. I can look if Peyton Manning is still in Denver. I can look there. If not, I can go to Pittsburgh and play with Big Ben. Uh oh, Bob, talk to me, Bob. Yeah, but have any of those teams made you any offer? They can't do it, Bob. We're still in the playoff. We, you, we, can, we cannot negotiate until after the Super Bowl, Bob. You should know this as a general manager. I see you ain't gonna be here long. <laughs> <laughs> well, the word on the street, since I'm the general manager and I know my ears to the grindstone, none of those teams want you. Now, 
You got here's a number for you. You got two for it, 24 hours to give me your word on what you want to do. Well, Bob, I just like, gave you, know, you my I'm word, and I'm gonna give you my word. I'm gonna give you my word in 24 seconds or less. I'm out of here. I'll see y'all when I see you. Release me, Bob. I'm a free agent now as I walk up out of this office. Thank you, Bob. It was nice working with you for this one day, but you ain't talking what I want to hear. I will be making my rounds after the Super Bowl to those top three teams to see who will want my services, see who needs my services, and Bob. There's two teams that I really hope to play for. One is New England, where you just left, and the other one is Green Bay. So I can come back up here to Ford Field and just rip you a new one. Meeting's over with, Bob. I'm Calvin Johnson. I'm out of here. Bob Quinn would be out of here not too long after me. <laughs> he would be fine. <laughs> he would be fine because he don't know how to negotiate. He will be fired in a couple of years. We're going to take a quick commercial break, Longhorn. When we come back, I want to talk some um, Detroit Pistons. You missed an excellent game last night, just in case you didn't catch it. But uh, Detroit Lions fan, Jim caught Oh, the phone that got disconnected, him. Yeah, but we'll be back after a word from our break. Detroit Sports Jersey listeners, if you would like to be a sponsor at Sports Jersey, the email address is info at DetroitSportsJersey.com. And the phone number is 313-624-7814. We air every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern on FM 88.1 WHPR with live streaming at FM 88.1 WHPR.com. Detroit Sports Jersey offers reasonable sponsorship rates. Detroit Sports Jersey is sponsored by ENO Productions slash Fiverr. That's F I V E R R. ENO Productions slash Fiverr does video production work, and this is where Detroit Sports Jersey goes for video work week after week. Again, that's ENO Productions slash Fiverr. That's F I V E R R. All right, welcome back to Detroit Sports Jersey Media. I'm your host, Will. Me and the hon- Longhorn holding it down. What time is it, Longhorn? Longhorn, are you still well, with Thursday me? media time. Let's get it on, Popcorn. Let's talk about those Pistons and Drummond with right. his 34th double-double. All right, Longhorn, check it out. They played They played the champs last night. Oh, yeah, they played the champs and gave the champs their fourth loss. Blew him out. It was Ben Wallace night last night at the Palace where they retired his number three jersey up in the rafters. Is that they, Big Ben? They blew him out 113-95. to 95. Now, Longhorn, the Pistons set sits at 22-18. and 18. If the playoffs was to start today, they would be the number, seed, number seventh seed team in the Eastern Conference playing Toronto. Do you see your Detroit Lions, I mean your Detroit Pistons, making some noise here in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, I see them making big noise. With that win over, with that win over the Warriors, man, you're not talking about a, a confidence booster. Confidence boosters out the, out the world, brother. You know what I'm saying? And, and with Drummond on fire with his 34th double-double, are you serious? Man, the Pistons on fire. All I can say, you better go out there and get your jersey. Get that chrome jersey that they sport now. The Pistons are on fire. I think they're making serious noise if the playoffs was to start today. So I think they're going to go a little deep. They're going deep, brother. It's the new era. They got their defense kicking on all cylinders. So, hey, go Pistons, go. And old Van Gundy, man, hey, he got those, He got everybody believing. They're, they're believing in what they're doing. And I don't want to hear nothing about drumming and still marketing itself with the league because I'm telling you, if. And here you go. Y'all know you don't like that word, if. Pistons win an NBA championship. Do you see Drummond still talking about he wants to lead the Pistons? Longhorn, okay. Oh, here we go. Okay, Longhorn, okay. Here first, we go. Here first we of go. all, okay. there, there you go playing that what if card again. Number one, they will not win the championship. The West is too strong, number one. You got San Antonio, who only done lost six games. You have okay, Golden State. Okay, how is it? Going deep into the playoffs, do you still see him trying to shop himself out? 
Hold on, long. Yes, I do. I, now, unless the Pistons come with the Mets offer, to, but, but but it depends on if Andre Drummond wants to win, if he see potential here. There's all I, I you know because you know they tried to sign him at the beginning of the season to um, long term deal, Longhorn. Well, I know. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't go for the long term. He he shut it down. He shut it down. You right, know what right. I'm saying? So that's right. That sometimes speaks volume of whether a player want to stay. Or whether he want to see what type of value he has out there on the free agent market. See, a lot and of that, would, all of that comes into play now. And, but you got to think about this too, right? He has his thirty fourth double double. Uh, uh, you follow me, right? Yeah, so I, I, I he, hear he you. Can, he can go on another team, and that system may not work for his style of play. Just because he's on the, you know, he's on the Pistons doing what he's, you know, making it happen. Doesn't mean he goes up to another team and he still gets the playing time and he still makes it happen as he's doing with the Pistons right now. So he can shop himself around, go on another team, and be a backup, or doesn't have the same numbers as he's doing with the Pistons. And then what? First of all, Longhorn, let me tell you something about this. A player that signs a 70, 80, 90, $100 million contract ain't no damn backup. You can believe that. You I'm get, just saying, bro. Yeah, no, 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 no. You don't goes, even. If he goes on another team, okay, not a backup. But if he goes on another team and he does not produce the same numbers as he's doing now, what does that say? But see, there you go on that what if, though. We're signing I didn't him. I say what if. I said what does that say? You say if he don't produce those same numbers, if he don't produce. What the hell that mean if it ain't what if? You like playing that what if card a lot, man. I don't want to ever play you be my spade partner. You do, you can never be, uh, what if I can get a book out of this two of heart? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> you don't get no no book out of a two of heart. Yeah, that, you, you wouldn't be saying that. You call, you call that reneging, brother. <laughs> that, ain't, <laughs> that ain't what you'll be looking at. You'd be like, damn, what if I can make a book out of this? I got a possible, <laughs> I got five and a possible six. <laughs> the hell out of here. <laughs> a five and a possible six. Yeah, but Longhorn, I'm just – I hope he stay with the Pistons. I think right now – see, like I said, man, you can look at the Pistons some nights. Like last night, man, they blew them out. They looked good. They look – I mean, man, they look like they could be a team that's unstoppable. But I don't see that on other nights. When they played the Spurs the other night, come on, man, it was like JV, Junior Varsity playing Varsity. The Spurs handed it to them. Okay, the Spurs handed to them. They handed it to Golden State. Yep, that's, see, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You're not listening to me, Longhorn. That's what I'm trying to tell you. On some nights, they look like they unstoppable. Then on some nights, you be like, oh, okay, here we go. Same old Pistons. Okay, you can say the same thing about, about Golden State and the same thing about the Spurs. No, no, no. First of all, lose, first of all, you no, 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 no. Okay, no, no. I, listen to this. On a night that the Spurs lose, on a night that the Golden State lose. So, are you saying, wow? Or the other night when they won, they looked there like they were unstoppable. Okay, the night they lost. Well, what happened to them? Who showed up tonight? First of are all, you what I'm saying. First of all, Longhorn. You only you only can say that four nights with the um, Golden State. They only lost four games. Pistons done lost 18 games, so there's no comparison to that. There's no how the hell are you gonna compare 18 losses to four losses? So, so that's, oh, okay, I got you. What you trying to say? A war, or the Golden State? They only you can only say that to them uh, four times. Wow, what what team showed up on those four losses? I got you. They played San Antonio the other night. They lost 109 to 99. They played them Tuesday night, January the 12th. They came back that Thursday and lost against Memphis, 103 to 101, on a fluke last minute shot. I don't know if you saw that, but hey, a win is a win. And then here you, now, 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 now that's what I'm telling you. Now them two nights you looking like, okay, here we go, Detroit Pistons. Now last night they blew Golden State out, 113 to 95. Come on, Longhorn, work with me here now. Come on. Come on. You blew out the champs, but you lost against Memphis? Okay, now you can say the same thing about Golden State. They won against some hard teams, oh, but you lost against the Pistons? Now, come on now. 
All right, now come on. I swear, man, sometimes talking to you, just, I just, man, are you serious? Are you comparing four losses to 18 losses? Is that what you're telling me, Longhorn? No, I'm telling you that the Pistons are, are, are kidding on all cylinders, and I think they will go deep in the playoffs if the playoffs will start today. I put, I will put a, 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 a Fago Red Pop on it and a bag of better made potato chips that they're going to go deep in the playoffs if the playoffs were to start today. Longhorn, so I, I don't want to. I think the Pistons are looking good. Longhorn, I don't want to take your lunch money, okay? You keep that, you know, because they're not going deep into no playoffs, first of all. That's not happening. They might get it past the second round. Let me let me let me pull up something real fast for you. Pull up your fuzzy numbers. Pull up the stats for me, brother. They might get past. Hold on one second. They might get past the first round. They might get past Toronto. I give you that, okay? If I'm just saying, at, just right now, if the playoffs minimum, the, huh? if the playoffs will have start today, I'm just gonna, let's just state today, cause think when well, we got a lot of basketball left, a lot of basketball. Oh, basketball you know hell we ain't even got to the all-star game yet i mean we got a lot of basketball left now granted what are we we almost had we almost at the halfway point of the season let me pull up something for you real quick longhorn just hold tight there for one second well i tell you what the pistons hey you best go out there and get your chrome jersey start sporting it because the chicken's gonna come home to roost the Pistons are going to represent, and I'm telling you, it's going to be on and popping. Detroit, the Detroit is going to be putting it right on the map, even though they're the Pistons are Auburn Hills, which I'm still a little, you know, I wish they would come on back downtown, bring all the teams back downtown, but still the Pistons are going to be on the map. Longhorn, to Longhorn, yeah. let's say, Longhorn, let's say the playoffs started today, right? I told you they got Toronto. Let's say they get past Toronto. You know who's up next? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening, brother. The Cleveland Cavaliers, King James. But they're not getting past Cleveland. I'm sorry. That's not happening, Longhorn. That's not happening. So as far as your deep, going deep, it's not happening, brother. Now, they better position themselves in a better seed if they want to get deep in the playoffs. You know, they need to get up there. They got to get. They need to get up there to where the Chicago will be in third seed, Atlanta will be in fourth seed, and in Indiana is um, ahead of them. But Dolph, they want. They don't. They want to avoid Cleveland in the next round. They need to get a better seed. Like I said, they can do that because they got a whole lot of basketball left, a whole lot. But if they was to start the playoffs today, Longhorn, the Detroit Pistons would probably get past Toronto, and that's it. It's a wrap. Simple as that. Simple as that. I don't see it, Longhorn. You know, and I'm not. I'm now. Are the Detroit Pistons better than what they were last year, the year before? Yes, of course. Hell yeah, they are. I give yeah, credit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, everybody got. They got to. They you know learn from their mistakes. If you're not learning, you're not growing. I give credit what credits do, Longhorn. But I don't. You know, these damn what ifs you always keep playing and coming up with this card. I, you gotta. You know, let that go, brother. It ain't happening. You know, we oh talk. My God. We talking about reality. You, that's like you gonna tell me. And I hate to go back to this to my champs from Alabama Road <laughs> Ties Road. If they lose, we oh, won't be able to buddy. find him. Uh, <laughs> hey, to the people out there that listen, to whether you listening on TV thirty three on the radio on YouTube after the game. I didn't hear nothing from the Longhorn, nothing. And, I, oh, oh, let me tell you something, too, about the Longhorn. I spoke to him. Oh, I spoke to him a couple of days <laughs> later. He didn't bring up nothing about that game. But let me tell you what he did do. Oh, he what went on. About, Willis? Now, I'm going to tell you what he did do. He went on YouTube, not YouTube, Facebook. When I told him about Seattle Seahawks was gelling at the when uh, when they were struggling to the Longhorn, but I told him they were hitting their stride. By the way, Longhorn they playing today in the playoffs. But when they were struggling at the beginning of the season, the Longhorn he made a video. He put it all out there on social media. He didn't make not one video about that Alabama game. Oh no, not one. What happened, Longhorn? Speaking of Seattle, they playing Carolina today. Who you got? We're going to get off into that later on. Don't worry about uh, that right now. Let's talk about that video you made. 
What you talking about, bro? Yeah, the sea chickens, <laughs> as you call them. Yeah, the sea <laughs> chickens playing today. Oh, yeah, by the way, Marshawn Lynch is back. <laughs> Marshawn Lynch is back. Boy, Fresh. I tell you, you just jumping over teams. I never seen. I never seen a, a person who jumps from team to team like you do, brother. I'm gonna tell you like the young lady before I started my show. Matter of fact, what is her name? Let me. She's still here at the station. Renee. She's a big Lions fan. She asked me, well, "Who team? What team do I have? You know, who do I root for in the NFL?" And I told her Frisco used to be my team. They're not no more. She's a diehard Lions fan, but I told her I'm a free agent. I root for anybody I want to. Yeah, That's, yeah, you root for anybody who's winning. All and right. As soon as that team lose, no, no, you jump on the bandwagon of the next team. No, 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 Longhorn. No, so no, if no. If Seattle lose today against Carolina, who you rooting for? No, no, no. Well, to keep be honest with you, I kind of yeah, be honest with me. No, no, no. Well, see, I got a little bet going on with somebody that I I gave him the field. In other words, I gave him the other thirty-one teams. I took. New England to win it all, cause until you, I'm, I'm a firm believer. Until you beat the champs, they still the champ. Just like Golden State, I'm picking them to win it again. Not saying that they are, but I'm picking them to win it again. And until you beat the champs, hey, just like Muhammad Ali, until you beat Ali, he was the champ. Until you beat him, that's all I can say. And I'm just a firm believer that in sports, until you beat the champs, hey, they still the champs. So I'm of picking course, until you beat them, they still the champs. Until the next season, it don't matter. Hey, you're, they the stay, champ, you're the champ for a whole year. What are you talking about? They coming into the season as the champ. We're gonna take a quick commercial break to hear a word from our sponsor when we come back. If you want to join in the conversation, three one three eight six eight three six eight eight. We're gonna get off into some uh, did you knows from the Longhorn. We'll be back after yeah. a word from our sponsor, Detroit Sports Jersey Media, eighty-eight point one FM WHPR. Hello, Detroit Sports Jersey listeners. If you would like to be a sponsor of Detroit Sports Jersey, the email address is info at DetroitSportsJersey.com. And the phone number is 313-624-7814. We air every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern on FM 88.1 WHPR with live streaming at FM 88.1 WHPR.com. Detroit Sports Jersey offers reasonable sponsorship rates. Detroit Sports Jersey is sponsored by ENO Productions slash Fiverr. That's F-I-V-E-R-R. ENO Productions slash Fiverr does video production work. And this is where Detroit Sports Jersey goes for video work week after week. Again, that's ENO Productions slash Fiverr. That's F-I-V-E-R-R. Some did you know? All right, all right. Okay, long on any day now. All right, all right. <laughs> did you know that the Philadelphia Eagles and the Pittsburgh Steelers once combined their teams to form the Steagles? That was happening during the World War II when the Eagles and the Steelers combined in 1943 to form one team called the Steagles. That's because because of the war, there wasn't enough people to play. So they had a team called the Steagles. Did you know that? 1943, Will, you probably would have uh, rooted for both teams, right? Whichever team was winning. What team? <laughs> you like Richard Pryor. Whatever team winning, that's your side. <laughs> Did you know that the, the, the volleyball, the volleyball itself comes from the bladder of the, of, the, of the basketball. So, you know, the rubber that's inside the basketball, the little black rubber. I don't know if you've ever taken a black, uh, basketball apart. Yep. But the volleyball comes from that rubber that's on the inside. They try to use the basketball itself as a volleyball, but it was too heavy. So, in 1895, they took the just rubber out that's inside the basketball, and they used that as the volleyball. Did you know that the Pittsburgh Pirates almost built their new stadium in the middle of the river back in the 1950s. They're going to build their, their stadium right over the river. 
and they was going to have the seating capacity of 70,000 seats. And, and the stadium would have contained 600 hotel rooms and and, and 4,500 parking stalls with an air-conditioned bowling lane. That was in 1950s, but they decided against that. And one more did you know, despite the running the running times of Major League Baseball of about three hours, the actual playing time in Major League Baseball is really actually under 18 minutes. Did you know that? So that's all the did you knows for this Sunday, January 17th. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. That's some did you knows from the Longhorn. Straight out of Central Texas, representing Detroit. You know, former. All right, jungle, yeah, representing the Motown. Former Jungle Lear. Former danced on the scene. <laughs> That's right, the Motor City Poppers. Y'all don't know about all that there back in uh, 1977, hey, 75. Hey, Longhorn, remember that group we put together and we did that backyard routine and y'all told me to stick out my leg? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Y'all didn't know Will. Will used to dance like rerun from back in the days on What's Happening. Ooh, he used to, so y'all ever watch the rerun on the old What's Happening show? That was, it used to be Will. He used to be that uh, locking dude back in the day. Hey, man, that was a funny, man. Yeah, we took off running. Y'all said, stick out the leg, and I stuck my leg out forward instead of sideways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we had a show for all y'all listeners, and uh, Will came in and did an act with us, and we told him to stick his leg to the side. He put his leg out forward and just messed up the whole routine. <laughs> so we all just ran out the backyard. Yeah, that was good good old times back in the day. All right, Longhorn, we got the NFL playoffs. We got Carolina taking on the Seahawks, 1 p.m. kickoff, 105. After that, 440 kickoff, Pittsburgh playing at Denver. But let me back up to last night's game. Longhorn, I don't know if you stayed up and watched it, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you didn't watch that game, Green Bay and Arizona game last night, which Arizona won 26 to 20. You missed a classic. They had it all, man. I'm telling you, you missed a classic football playoff game last night. Green Bay at Arizona. Aaron Rodgers and the you Detroit Lions fans know about that Hail Mary he put on y'all on that Thursday night game. He did it again last night at Arizona with no more time left on the clock to take it into overtime. But, of course, Arizona pulled it out long. I mean, that was a – man, I'm telling you. that was Arizona, a, Arizona, man, they, hey, they're the truth, brother. I'm they got a nice – you. you know what? I'm going to admit, they got a nice team. I'm not going to lie. I was impressed. I was impressed. Okay. Yeah, you know what? You know what, you know what would impress me? If you don't cheer for Arizona, <laughs> <laughs> that would impress me if you wouldn't cheer for Arizona. Like I said, brother, I'm taking – I got the feel. I mean, I got uh, Tom Brady and the Patriots, who also won yesterday, um, 28 to 20. 20 but, uh, you know, the, the scores, oh, are, getting, the back, scores are getting tight, man. Uh, I, I would tell you that much. Let me take that score back, uh, what I said. But, yeah, uh, I think it was 27 to 20. 27 to 20 yeah. against uh, Kansas City. The yeah. scores are getting tight. Well, let me tell you, you know, something. It's only about... been, you know, the, the playoffs, hey, the, the wins only come about one touchdown. So, Man, Kansas City, they know they need to know how to manage the clock, man, for real. Right, I, that's true. I mean, that's man, true. they they just do not know how to manage that clock. They get, actually, they actually they gave the game away. I'm looking I'm at that, to tell you. I'm looking at that game like, are you serious? I mean, you coming up to the to the line. You run the clock is just ticking. Why are you having a huddle? These you should be three or four plays deep into your head. Oh, the clock is ticking. You have no number one timeout left. If it, I mean, that, that that was a poor mismanaged time clock game last night. Kansas City basically, man, and I'm not going to say they beat themselves and they, um, the Patriots didn't win, but 
you know, they got to get better on that time management of the clock, man. It was it was ugly. Even though, like I said, I'm taking uh, the Patriots to win it all again. Because, like I said, anytime y'all piss off Tom Brady, what did he do? He comes back and win a Super Bowl. And y'all pissed him off with the cheating of the deflate gate all. Talked about that all year. So Yeah, you think you think he's gonna uh you think he's gonna have some football sitting around him at the at the at the end of the Super Bowl, you know, Super Bowl party, saying come away these football. I'm telling you right now, I'm just telling you right now, they're gonna win it all to me. Yeah, I know I know I know you saying, I know you predicting. They're gonna win it all. And I don't want to throw the IF word out there because I'm just going to sit back and wait. Because whichever team, whichever team doesn't win, you're going to jump on their bandwagon. You know, I'm going to call you the, I'm going to call you the, the uh, fair weather football fan. Listen here, Longhorn. I'm telling you right now, like I told you with Alabama, we're going to be the champs again, the Patriots. I, I told you last year. And I'm telling you again this year, everything I was going to predict it, Longhorn, then came true. Okay, give me a prediction over Kansas City and uh, – I'm not Kansas City, but Seattle and, uh, and the Panthers. What's your prediction on that game? Oh, man. See, now you're holding my feet to the fire, Longhorn, because – Oh, I'm... yeah. And don't talk to me like no politician, either. Don't <laughs> say no crazy stuff like, well, if uh, Seattle plays good offense and they score more points than the Panthers, they'll win. On the other hand, if Carolina scores two or three more touchdowns than Seattle at the end of the game, they'll win. No, okay. (laughs) Don't come with no politician ass. No, no, no. I'm going to give you a straight-up answer here, a straight-up real answer. See, it's hard to call because (laughs) (laughs) – Look, look, brother, it's either name or team. Seattle or Carolina, not no hard I'm, to call. It is hard to call, man, because Cam Newton, the boys, they playing excellent football there. Um, you still that long on? I'm still here. I'm waiting for your uh, politician answer now. I'm, I'm, you know. Marshawn Lynch is back with Seattle. He done been off for two months, so he should have some fresh legs. Yeah, fresh legs, however. And that right there is going to be dangerous. That's going to be dangerous right there. Yeah, but fresh legs, but you haven't paid, played for two months. You haven't been hit oh. for two months. Oh, man, this is a hard so it's different having fresh legs and being hit. Give me your prediction, months. Longhorn, and I'll give you mine after you give me yours. I got to think about this. This is a hard one. I say Carolina's going to win. See how hard that was? <laughs> See how hard that was? Yes, no answer. Carolina ah. will beat the Seahawks. Ah, I love Cam Newton, man. Ah, I hate to pick against him, but I home... thought you like. Uh, I thought you. I thought your man was Wilson. I'm going. I'm picking Seattle to win it, cause only for the simple fact that Marshawn Lynch is back. So if he wasn't back, you go with uh, Carolina. Carolina. All right. So Pittsburgh, Denver. Well, you got two banged up quarterbacks in Peyton Manning and Big Ben, so uh, I'm gonna take uh, uh, I'm gonna take Denver for the simple fact they're at home. I'm gonna ride uh, out the I'm gonna ride out the Broncos on this one. I'm going with Pittsburgh. All right, there it is. You got Carolina and Pitt. I got Seattle and Denver. We'll see how the predictions, you know. Fair next week when we talk this time because after today's game, as we know, we'll be down to the final four. And not too long after that, it'll be the Super Bowl. And may the best man win is all I can say, Longhorn. is all. Man, I can't wait, brother. I can't wait. I can't wait for this season to be over with so we can start the next football man, season. Man, no, don't say that. Don't say that. Uh-uh, it's a long, man, this long year when football ain't in season. Uh-uh. <laughs> don't say that. Please don't say that. It well, I can't wait for this season to be over so we can start next season. So we can start looking about who's going to draft the next year to come, the come, uh, the combine, uh, not the combine, the combine. I can't wait till that starts up. You know, season's going to be drafted coming out of college. So that's all that is exciting to me. So to see the new rookies coming out and see how okay it was. The winning teams were a fluke last year. 
and see who's going to be the champions this year, who's going to defend a title for next year. So all that as uh, football is a 365-day, uh, 24-7-day thing for me. So it doesn't end just because the end of the uh, Super Bowl for me. It's, it's a, it's a uh, all-year thing. So. All right, there it is, Longhorn. And then, and then you got the college basketball. Here come March Madden coming around. So, oh yeah. By the way, let me give the University of Michigan a shout out for beating Maryland, number three ranked team in the country, earlier this past week. They did, went out there and did their thing. Congratulations to them boys. You know, that's right. Bring it on. Bring it on. So March uh, Madness. Yeah, it's, hey, it's, right around the corner. Oh hey, yeah. It, ball, ball. Hey, February is gone. Might as well say February is gone in a couple of months, in a couple of weeks. January, February, I mean, not February, but January, February, March, shoot, it's right around the corner. Uh, get, your, get your jerseys together. Get your uh, get your brackets together. No, you know what's amazing? is spring training for baseball is right around the corner. <laughs> That's, which it, to me is a good thing because that lets you know when it's almost over. Oh, I know. Y'all don't worry about that down there, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to read you. <laughs> <laughs> when it's almost over for who? Because <laughs> I've been Detroit, man. It's always winter. I don't think winter's over for Detroit until like man. what June first, right? Maybe yeah. June fifteenth. Hey, I'm telling you. Hey, I'm telling you one thing, man. I'm glad my heat is included in my rent, man. I'll be having it on blast. Just yeah. walk, <laughs> walking around in shorts. <laughs> Straight up on blast. All right, we're going to get our big dummy uh, segment going on here. Longhorn, you ready for your big dummy? Yeah, bring it on. Bring it on, Peter Wee Strong. All right, hand dog hit it. We about to do the big dummy. All right, long on. Who's your big dummy for the week? All right, my big dummy, my big dummy, is for any fans who out there, so-called fans, who think Caldwell should have been let go. Those are my big dummies for this week. Thanks, Bob Quinn, for keeping the man on for one more season. So my big dummy for anybody who think Caldwell should have been should have been axed. Those are my big dummies. All right, here go my big dummy, Longhorn. I don't want you to take this personal and get mad, but uh, you're going to have to be my big dummy for the week for doubting me about Alabama winning the national championship. Don't take I don't it. take it personal. It's only business. You know, um, you doubted me. You doubted Nick Saban. You, you doubted the whole organization and the institute that we build down there. The you bill. <laughs> <Gee>. <laughs> you, you and then I tell I, you didn't I tell you what do Nick Saban do after the national championship game is played? He hits the road and get recruiting and working on next year. You have to love a coach like that. He don't even take time off to celebrate. Celebrate what? This season is over with. As of last night, I've not last night, but the night they won the championship. That season was behind him. He's looking for this coming up season again. Once again, Longhorn, and you and anybody else out there that doubted us, the Clemson fan, the whole universe out there, except for the people in Alabama and myself, y'all are my big dummy. Don't y'all ever doubt us again. And we will be back to repeat as national championship in 2000. 17. Thank you, Longhorn. I appreciate your patience. <laughs> All right, Longhorn, what else you got for the people? I was waiting on the Jersey girl to call. I was waiting on the Jersey girl to call in. She texted me saying she having phone difficulties, so I don't know if she's going to make it in on time or what, but she got a few minutes here. Go ahead, Longhorn. What else you got? Oh man, you are something else, brother. Uh, <laughs> I, I tell you, I tell you what, you might go ahead and get you. Where's you? Where's your Bama uh, jersey at? Since you on the, since you on the squad and everything, where's your Bama jersey at? You got your Bama jersey? 
Listen here, Long. Well, let me tell you something. Why you, you riding around with that um, uh, Michigan State plate on your car? Where you where you Bama play that? Let me tell you something, Longhorn. I don't put on a jersey of no other man's name on my back. That's number one. Wait a minute. They got back. Hey, hold on now. I'm talking about college jerseys. College jerseys, you don't have names on back. They got the name of the college on it. Well, some of them do have the names, Longhorn. Now, you, you got to pay attention to the game. Well, they got college jerseys with just Bama. Well, they got jerseys with just Bama's on it. First, uh, second of all, Longhorn, I'm too damn old to be walking around here like I'm 15 to be wearing, <laughs> wearing the jerseys in top 10s. Now, come on now. I'm too, <laughs> but wow. I'm good enough holding up that crystal ball trophy, Longhorn. That jerseys don't matter. Be wearing the jersey. Don't um, – well, how, what word am I looking for here? Don't you – know, well, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. But anyway, Longhorn, all you need to know is we are the champions. That's so you're going to take that uh, You're gonna take that Michigan State plate off the back of your ride and put a Bama plate See, on there? That's you, what I'm talking about. You can sit up there and tell all your Jerry Seinfeld jokes you want to, but we are the Wait champions. Wait a minute. Hold oh, no, on. That's not a joke. You got a Michigan State <laughs> – Plate on your ride. Them just, them just rumors, sir. Them just rumors. It's rumors. Them just rumors. Don't, right. don't believe everything you hear. Them is just flat out rumors, Longhorn. Oh, it's rumors. And to oh, satisfy you, know, okay. you know, you know what, Longhorn? I'm gonna get me one on my, on my car to satisfy you and take a picture of it and send it to you. I'm gonna be on one side of the plate. Nick Saban gonna be on the other side, and the crystal ball championship football trophy is gonna be in the middle. How about that? Yeah, uh, how about that? Uh, how about that? When I see that, brother, I'm going to – hey, if, if somebody can give me a picture of that, I got a special prize for them. You know. so, what else you got for the people, Longhorn? Get off get off of um, Alabama. We the champs. We, we, don't, we don't talk to people. We don't talk to second place people. We don't do that. <laughs> we don't, we, that's wasting our air, our breath, our time, everything. Talk to the people. What else you got for the people? Hey, what's it going on at Detroit Public Schools up there? Are you guys going to fix y'all school system? I, I give two hats off. You guys, uh, teachers going on strike. Come on, teachers up there. Y'all got to, y'all got to, you know, look out for the kids up there. Don't go on strike. And stop calling on them sick days. All you doing is hurting the kids. Not long, So if anybody would agree with me up there, y'all need to call in. Kids need to stay in school as long as they can. If they're not in school, Come on, make up some homework for them or something. Longhorn. Can't be lagging behind. Longhorn, I'm kind of torn on that subject because, man, these schools, I mean, you should see the conditions that they're in, man. I mean, I understand what you're saying, and I don't like the kids missing school also, but, man, if you're working in conditions that's making you sick and right. the schools are freezing where the kids can't concentrate, I mean, it's like a catch-22 type thing. I mean, I when we, you should see if you can go online and see the conditions of these schools. Hold on. Yeah, I mean yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah. The Jersey girl, is that you? Woo! Okay, finally got reception. All right, now Jer- hey. Jersey Jersey girl out there in that hawk trying to get the reception. <laughs> what is it about fifteen below up there? <laughs> <laughs> In that well, you know what the problem you know what the problem is, Jersey girl, don't you? What? This is Obama's last year in office, so them Obama phones are not working as quite <laughs> when they. See, now I got an Obama phone. <laughs> See, no. I can't. See, now y'all joking. Hey, what did you got? A, um, something going on with your I phone? I hear some uh, echo or something. Okay, wait. I was about to say there was a um. Oof. There was uh, a noise just a second ago. That's your Obama phone. Jersey girl, you got to call back. That Obama phone need to be charged up, battery changed or something. Leave my Obama phone alone. Oh, there you go. There you go. Hey, wherever you standing at, just stay right there. Don't even move. Okay, I'm not breathing. That I love it. <laughs> Jersey girl, we got a few minutes. We're going to role okay, play here. Up? Okay? Okay. You're Bob Quinn. I'm Calvin Johnson. We're opening up negotiations. 
You going to tell me why I should stay, and I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to. Go ahead. You Bob Quinn. <laughs> All right. So um, I, you guys respect Jim Caldwell. I'm bringing him back just for you all. I think that you and Matthew have a very good connection. I'm not going to change anything right now. Not right now. I'm going to see how this year goes. But give me one more year. Let's have one more year out of you. And we'll see what we can do. I have good feelings. I'm going to draft well. I'm going to draft your replacement. And this is, is going to work. This is going to work this year. Do you expect me to take a pay cut after that speech? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Bob. Okay, Bob. I'm telling you right now, as I ease up off this table, I don't want to break your heart. And please don't take this personal. Only two letters, two numbers I want to hear to come out of your mouth is 2-4, and I ain't talking about the team player's jersey number. I'm talking about $24 million. Because I'm going to tell you something, Bob. If I leave here, your quarterback going to be exposed. I made him. He didn't make me. Y'all paying him all that money. Y'all ain't asking him to take no hometown discount. As a matter of fact, when his contract is up, he's going to be demanding more money. Oh, Bob, by the way, I got two teams that I'm looking at that can use my services before I give a hometown discount to, and that's your New England Patriots who you just left. Oh, we ain't talking. We talking Tom Brady. And don't let me go into the division and go to Green Bay and come back here where well, y'all have to play me twice, Bob. You don't want that. <laughs> Bob, you got to come. That's fine. That's, no. fi that's fine, Bob. Okay, I understand and I respect that. There's you know what I told him, Jersey girl? What? I said, I'm going to give you two four, 24 hours or 24 seconds to get out of my office. <laughs> as I'm giving my farewell. As, as I'm giving my farewell speech, Bob, to the media, telling him how it's been nice to me, you know, been playing here for all these years and everything. Bob, you might as well come up on behind me because you won't be here that long either. That's how you negotiate. <laughs> Bob will be here a little bit longer. Oh, you think so. Only reason they brought back Carwell, Jersey Girl, and you know this, is because when they fail, he got somebody to blame. Come on. I'll agree, but I also think that the fact that he at least listened to the players and went ahead and did that, because think about it, if he let him go and the players really, really, really respected him that much, next year might, have been, might be a complete disaster. He would lose the locker room, and I think that would not work. You know why the players so, wanted Caldwell here? Because Caldwell going to keep their job. The new coach will come in and get rid of all them bums. Of course they was cheering for Caldwell to come back. No, that's yeah. not true. That's not so, brother. <laughs> How come it's well, not I, true? I think, that, I think that it'll just be this year, though. I, don't, I think if they improve, I think if they improve in the draft, I think if their record is good next year, I think he stays. But if if they don't if they don't draft well, I think if they don't have a good season, I think you know any eight and eight or worse, I think he's gone after next year. Oh yeah! By the way, Bob, that next year y'all been screaming that since '57. I've been hearing it for nine years. I'm tired of hearing that, Bob. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing that, Bob. Since 57. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing know, wait till next I year. I know, but I mean it. I mean it this year. Things are changing. I was director of scouting. Your scouts were terrible. So now I'm bringing in some of my people, and they're going to scout, and they're going to make some good changes. Trust me, it's going to change. Okay, on that note, Bob, the clock has run out on our negotiation. I'm sorry to say, but I have to take my services elsewhere, just like Sue did, just like Cliff Avery did. I'm sorry, but uh, y'all, ha you have said nothing that keeps my attention and keeps me here. All I told you I wanted to hear was $24 million. You refused to give me that, so... All right, Bob, <laughs> you, Bob, Bob, Martha, Carwell, all y'all three stooges, have a good time. I'm out of here. And I will be playing in the Super Bowl next year with your boy Brady or Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson. Best of luck to you in the future, Mr. Johnson. Oh, uh, thank you very much. We up out of here, Detroit Sports Jersey. We're here live every Sunday. This is Calvin Johnson signing off. WHPR 88.1 FN Lions fan has been real, but y'all will be back in the toilet again without me. Your quarterback will be exposed. Final words for Georgia Girl Longhorn. <laughs> Woo!
what a game last night. What a game last night. Let's see. That was a classic. That was a classic. That was a classic game last night. Congratulations to your Tide, Alabama Tide. Knew that was coming, so there you go. Good luck. <laughs> All right, Longhorn, we out of here. Game time, prime time. Detroit Sports Jersey Media time, and I'm gone. Thank you, listeners from Detroit to Central Texas, for joining us here live on Detroit Sports Jersey Media with your host, Will Sims, and co host Longhorn and the Jersey Girl, every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, right here on FM 88.1 WHPR. Visit us at DetroitSportsJersey.com. Straight sports talk. No professionals here. Have a great week.